So recently we designed this bottle in Fusion 360 that was 3D printed from recycled bottles and at the end of the video I wanted to see if it could hold water. Now FDM 3D printing is a layer by layer process where it melts plastic out of a nozzle and it lays that plastic down layer by layer on top of the previous uh, layer. But that doesn't mean that there's not going to be gaps or sort of imperfections in the 3D print and water being what water does will find any sort of small gap or hole and leak out. So we filled this up with water and it did leak but not very much. Actually surprised me quite a bit. I thought it would be just the water would just go straight through it. And a lot of you guys had some fantastic suggestions in the comments as to why that could be. I did put a fillet around the bottom of the print and that seems to be the consensus for why it leaked because we did print this in vase, vase mode where it prints a single perimeter. So it's very thin and strong, but that means that that part where the, the um, fillet is, there might be a slight gap in some areas where it might be leaking. So it didn't leak out the side, only leaked out the bottom. So in this video, I'm going to try a few changes to my bottle and I'm going to try to see if I can actually make it watertight. And unfortunately, I can't test this bottle again because someone broke it. You know who you are. But I am also going to show you at the end of this video as a bit of another tip, how you can calculate volume in Fusion 360, which is very simple to do if you actually want to make this bottle hold a specific volume of liquid. So let's get into it. All right, guys, welcome back. So here we have our bottle from last week, and this was modeled very carefully in the way that I can go back and change things. It's called parametric modeling, parametric CAD, and it's something that you can do in Fusion 360 quite powerfully. So down the bottom left, we have our timeline or our feature tree, whatever CAD software package you're used to it being called. And we can scroll back through our features. So I can go back and show you how I made this. I started with a new component. So this, is, this was our sketch of the bottle, which we then revolved like that. Then we gave it our fillet. And these fillets at the top here and the bottom here, that's where we want to change some things. So I'm going to leave this model rolled back. I'm not going to roll through the uh, the sweep, uh, which, which was these sort of details here, because to make them, I had to break the relation between that spline and the sweep path. You may remember in the previous video, it was a little bit difficult to do. So because I'm changing things, that's going to break pretty badly and I would have to remodel it slightly. So I'm just going to stop here and I'm going to take this point to work out how I can make this bottle waterproof. So from the bottom here, we can go back to our fillet, right click edit feature. And there was two ideas as to how we could make it waterproof. One was to remove the fillet entirely and have the bottom of the bottle completely flat. Now that may not look very good and it doesn't look like a normal bottle would because you can't really do it in uh, blow molding. But for 3D printing, it actually might make it watertight. So let's try that first. So what I'm gonna do is where I have edges here, I'm just gonna hold down control and that lets me select or deselect edges for filleting. So by holding that control, I can deselect this bottom one. So we're only filleting the top, which is okay. It wasn't leaking there. So I can say okay. And the bottom is flat like that. So that's one variation. I'm gonna save this off as an STL file and we're going to try this. I'm not gonna print the whole thing, just the base so I don't waste plastic, but we're gonna see if that's watertight. So save as an STL. If you haven't seen that video, just right click the uh, component or um, the body, but just uh, right click components, only one, one body in it. So right click PET bottle, save as STL. And we're gonna save, that's fine. And save. So we've got our bottle with no fillet saved. Now I'm going to add a chamfer. So a lot of you guys also suggested that a chamfer might be a better option than a fillet because the fillet starts out at a steep angle and then rotates around nicely. But a chamfer is different. So I'm going to go to modify and chamfer. And instead of being a curve, a chamfer is a straight line. So I'm gonna select the edges of the chamfer, this bottom one here. And there's a few different types of chamfer that Fusion can do. I'm just gonna drag it in. So I'm just gonna drag it in like this. So this is the default equal distance and that's doing an equal distance from each point that it's intersecting. So it's equal distance from here and here. But that's that looks too steep to me. I think that may leak. 
So I'm going to change chamfer type to distance and angle. So by doing that, I can actually rotate the angle that the chamfer is at. So I can go down here with this little dial and change this. And you can see it's altering how steep that chamfer is. So I think 20 or maybe let's go with 25. No, 30 works. So let's go with a 30 chamfer for this 30 degree angle for the chamfer and distance seven. That's probably a bit much. Let's go with six. All right. So we've got a chamfer that makes the bottom look a little bit more interesting, but maybe not as nice as a curve, but maybe this won't leak this time. So again, I'm just going to say this is an STL, right click, save as STL. Okay. And this time it is modified bottle with a chamfer. So say you're designing this bottle and it has to hold a certain amount of liquid, which is more likely than not the case if you're designing a bottle. Well, we can work that out actually fairly easily in Fusion. So Fusion lets you assign materials to an object. Right now, you notice it's that gray shiny material. That's because it's got steel assigned to it. So let's change it from steel to water, shall we? So to do that, you want to right click on the component on the left hand side from the, from the, the drop down and select physical material. So this window will pop up. I'm just going to move it out of the way so you can see it. So physical material, we can now assign what material this object would be. And it has a whole drop down of different objects, ceramics, fabrics, but we want liquid, we want water. And we can just drag that into the shape, into the object, and it will change the appearance to reflect what we've changed it to. So it's gone nice and uh, transparent. Close that. And now we have our object as if it was made from water, which actually looks pretty funky. So to work out how much water that volume is, we can now go to right click PET bottle and properties, and it will tell you here the area, density and mass. And the mass is this because water, one liter is approximately one kilo kilogram of water. So it's saying 388 grams. So that's about 388 uh, milliliters of water, right? So now we've got that, we can start tweaking our shape and it's a trial and error process to get it to what you want. Also keep in mind that when you have a bottle of water, it's not gonna be filled up right to the top here. You notice the, the, the top sort of, as if, it, as if the bottle's completely filled. So we can go to modify and uh, push and pull to really quickly just change this uh, top down to that, which is more realistically what it would have. Also keep in mind the plastic would have a thickness so you could offset the shape that's more complicated than I need to go into for this video. But let's just say we're going to change the height. So right click our sketch down the bottom and let's make this bottle 200 millimeters high like that. So stretched out a bit, looks a bit like a fancy, uh, I guess, mineral water bottle. And now we can work out the volume of this one as well. So properties and see it's now 493 grams or 493 milliliters. So we're getting close to a 500. If I change those splines a bit, I could probably get it pretty close. And that's how you can work out the exact volume of your object. And we're back. So I've got the two prints completed off the Wanhao i3 version two in the refill recycled PET plastic. And I've got the two versions here. So I've got the one with no, uh, no fillet or chamfer at the bottom. And this one has the chamfer. So looking at the two, I'm kind of thinking the one with the chamfer may leak, but the one that has nothing actually might work. Uh, it hasn't stopped raining for the last like two weeks. So we're doing this inside. So I've got a little container here. So let's see how we go. Move the microphone slightly out of the way so the microphone doesn't get wet. So let's try the one with nothing at the bottom. So this is 3D printed with a 0.5 millimeter nozzle with the Flexion extruder. using the same settings that I used previously. So it was using vase mode. And so far, you know what? That looks pretty conclusive. So I can't see any leaking at all from this 3D print. It's holding the water just fine. Actually, very, very well. Actually, a nice little cup. You could probably drink that. Okay, so one with the flat base, no fillet or chamfer, holds water perfectly. So for you guys who suggested that in the comments, well done, you're correct. So let's try the chamfer. So 
This one may hold water, it may not, but we'll see. I'm just going to pour it in from this other one. There we go. And how about that? So the chamfer also holds water too. And I think the reason this works is the chamfer is a set angle. It's not changing or deviating in any way. Whereas the fillet we did before starts at a very steep angle and then gradually as it goes around the curve becomes less extreme. And it's those steep starting layers that where that sort of uh, that where the gaps may be between the filament layers, but that seems to be holding water perfectly. So there you go, guys. Two different ways you can make your containers watertight. Don't give them a fillet at the bottom. Make them flat, or give them a chamfer that's not too extreme. Print with a uh, in this case a 0.5 millimeter nozzle. Don't go too fast. And this is vase mode, so a single perimeter. And it holds water no problem. <laughs> so if you can enjoy this video guys on Makers Muse and want to see future 3D printing tips, tricks and reviews and more Fusion 360 videos, then hit that subscribe button. It helps me us out a huge amount. I love doing this sort of thing. It's like a bit of a cup actually. I hope I didn't drink plastic then. Anyway, I look forward to seeing you again very shortly here on Makers Muse. Catch you later guys. Bye. Rockets into deep space. He has placed satellites into orbit.